the NASA authority have been brought to heel, finally. Now our economy is set to roar, and we might even stay federated with the Rock Rock, assuming no one else declares war on us for no good reason whatsoever. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Federations in our final Federation 2 series. So we finally, finally have beaten the NASA back. I have some research decisions to make as I begin here, and then we are going to start playing the diplomatic game like we have not for the entire series. I only have three envoys right now. I'll take a look at them in a moment. But I want to try to see if there's anyone else that, that I can get into this federation, including potential future members that we might have to start cozying up to now, like we were trying to do earlier in the series. But one thing that is going to happen for certain is that we are going to punish the NASA authority so, so much. We are going to punish them into the Stone Age. I don't know if we'll take their entire territory, but we are going to take a lot of this. This has given me a massive narrative justification for all of the militarism that I was talking about early in the series. Wasn't the plan. I've been fighting for this entire series. Now that I've finally turned things around, I am uh, I'm kind of pissed. I'm going to take out my frustration on them. So I have my fleets returning to some, ship some shipyards where they can repair up. Let's make those research decisions now. Let's see, gateway travel, probably a good idea to go ahead and research this so that I can jump around as needed. Habitability plus five, let's go ahead and do that just to bolster the economy a little bit. I do want to research this Elgate Insight. How close are we, BT dubs, to... We're only at one of seven. Wow. That's how far away we are from researching the Elgate. We've been fighting this entire time. We have no Elgate Insights as a result of putting all this off for so long. That is nuts. But we are soon to have multiple fleets that are capable of taking on perhaps the Shard as well as the Enigmatic Fortress uh, together in combination anyway. So we're going to wait until we've built a few more things up. But uh, lots of really fun stuff going on. In just a few moments, we will finally be able to add another Civic as well to our empire. I suppose you can call it an empire at this point. Still a republic, but to our space territory, nation, whatever you want to call it. Let's go ahead and upgrade this because I do want more pop growth on Dune. Now, one thing I'm going to go ahead and take a look at as we begin. I have a number of worlds where robot production is happening. I have some newer worlds. Also, I just remembered this. Let me take a look. Have I researched climate restoration yet? Yes, I have. So I can go ahead and terraform Mars, which we are absolutely going to do. Just haven't been able to really afford this for a while, but now we've given that order at long last. So that'll give us another planet. That's insanely helpful. What else can we do? I've got a fair amount of extra, oh my God, look at exotic gases. Look at that, plus 35. That is crazy. I'm going to upgrade my commercial centers where I can see that they need upgrades. Yes, I will absolutely upgrade anything that needs gas to upgrade, because why the heck not? I'll also go ahead and sell those gases, because uh, I need to buy some minerals. And see, now we have a large stockpile of Zro, so we're doing fine on energy, too. Okay. Yeah, so much to do. All right, as I was saying, we have some robot pops that can probably get moved around. So let's take a look at where we might be able to send. Like, for instance, Concord is an industrial world. I could probably send a fair amount of robot pops there. I could send some to New Jamestown, which is a mining world. I think New Jamestown already has... Ro no, it doesn't already have robot production. Concord does have robot production. Okay, so maybe I won't move robots to Concord. But maybe I'll move some to New Jamestown, since it's a mining colony. That seems like it might be a good idea. Kind of a work world, if you want to treat it that way. Alright, so let's resettle to New Jamestown. Yep. Okay, so I can't move any more than that. So those are the ones from Atlantis. And we have Terra Nova as well.
Ah, oh, dang. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do that too many times. Was it from Terra Nova or Atlantis that I was resettling a moment ago? Let me just triple check. I wasn't even paying that close attention. I know you were, but yeah. Okay, so it was Atlantis. Decline. Any other worlds where we have those? I think there's at least one more. Yes, there's Concord. But beyond that, I think there's one more. All right, New Jamestown can definitely do more. New Roanoke already has robot construction on it. That's good to see. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and, first of all, we're going to upgrade that for some additional trade value. I do think an extra Audington Monument at this point might be good. Is there anything else that's, like, screaming at me? Right now, this is a mining world. Let's go ahead and put another alloy foundry on New Jamestown. Let's really get our alloy production nice and high. Okay, I'm going to upgrade that civilian fabricator too. Don't want to do too many upgrades at once because you want to let things kind of develop in stages. Let's see, the Fianita base. Let me think. I have lots of star fortresses to build too. We have so many things to do. It's crazy. I could definitely have some additional shipyards at Sirius. I don't need more naval cap right now. And I do need to build at least one more station that can collect trade value from that area I've pointed out for a few episodes in a row. But for Sirius, I'm kind of tempted just to... Yeah, let's, let's just do a couple more shipyards. I like the idea of that station being not only a defensive point, but also something that can crank out ships when needed. We also have the option of building the mega shipyard at some point in the future. So we might be going there. We're going to be paused for a moment now that we're finally at peace. Absolutely. Now, don't I also have the ability? Yes, I do. I can build habitats. Um, they need 200 influence each habitats. So it's, it's going to take me a while to get there. I am, by the way, finally promoting... Or I'm suppressing the xenophile faction so what i'm hoping yeah see militarism still is not gaining that much support i need support greater than 20 percent in order to embrace militarism and then if i look at yeah, right now, 40% of our pops support xenophilia or um, xenophily, if you want to put it that way. But it will eventually be 26. So those percentages hopefully will start to peel over into militarism, especially if we get a military chancellor again. So we're going to have to play with our influence a bit. I'm still mad that I missed that election last episode. We had the victory against the Natsa, so you know, I'll take it. But let's just kind of cross our fingers that we don't have another war right on the heels of this first situation. Now, a, now the Kazvek station is an interesting kind of defensive point because, I guess I'll go ahead and give those upgrades, give those upgrade orders, but it's not as necessary as it used to be, but if the Natsa were to try and hit my economic territory on this side, having that station there is a huge benefit. So I will keep that one there. I'll get you upgraded. And now the Mirak station is building. Let me go ahead and give the order to build one in Pergafa, as promised. Let me also look at my various species and make sure there's nothing funny going on. We are, of course, latent psionic, which is great. Any other modding that I can do? No. Not at the moment. We can modify the Ganvius. There are a number of Ganvius pops, and they're unruly, so I can create a template that is not... Ooh, interesting. I need another trait point in order to remove that. But I can remove weak, so let's do that, at least. That will improve their resource output. That's going to finish in seven months. Now we have some de some debris, some debris in Mighton that we're going to take care of. It's so nice to finally 
be able to make some kind of peacetime decisions, you know? Why don't you come down here, research that. And then where can we support research? I guess I can go ahead and delete this science ship for now. The NSS Aldrin, rest in peace. It's not needed anymore. At least for the time being. All right, let's go up to speed two. Let things develop for a moment. We need 250 influence in order to applied. reform. Ship upgrades applied. Ship upgrades applied. Ship upgrades applied. What I'm hoping is that this estimate will start to change Ship upgrades as this applied. number drops. You can already see the number, like the percentage of pops following that ethic Ship dropping upgrades applied. rather precipitously. So I think having a military chancellor is going to be pretty important. Ship upgrades applied. We might also be able to Ship adopt a civic applied. that is useful Ship for our current purposes. Applied. So I'll keep an open mind to that. Ship upgrades applied. What's this? May the scientist die. Oh, a scientist on Earth. Rest in peace. Okay, Glim Unron is going to be our new scientist. Ship upgrades applied. All right, so our fleets are moving through. Ship upgrades applied. Pretty rapidly. I think these fleets are strong enough, especially once I build my other ships. These fleets are going to be strong enough to take on the Grand Dragon and the Enigmatic Fortress. So we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up, for sure. Praxicodium Primum embraces cybernetics. Disconcerting. How many more crystals do I have? Plenty. Let's go ahead and upgrade one more of those. Construction completed. I'll do another admin park too. With all of those upgrades, you, as I've said this before, but you just always want to make sure that you are staging them effectively. Oh, we lost another researcher. That's a shame. Opsheen Stayharm or Sashnapodan. I think we'll go with Opsheen. This is a better scientist for a science ship. But yeah, you want to make sure that you're staging those upgrades appropriately because again they draw from both your rare resource pool and your primary resources every time you upgrade because they convert one of your primary resources to one of your rare resources but then they require Species rare resources for upkeep has concluded you have to really keep an eye on each upgrade one at a time do i have an extra moat yes i do analyzed. good all right, so we got some physics research and engineering research for that. Hmm. Dune needs a little bit more housing. Let's build a farm. All right, the Fianita station still needs something in this slot. I mean, I suppose I could do a defense grid supercomputer and just have a bunch of... I mean, we've got a massive energy income right now, so I can have something taking that up for sure. All right, I'm going to give the order to reinforce the second fleet first. Okay, so you're ready to upgrade. And you guys are in Sol 2. Perfect. So I've given the order for those ships to upgrade independently. We do need to take care of that Empire Spall problem, but some of the upgrades completed. that I've already queued up on my various worlds should take care of that. Emphasis on should. Ah, there's a lens flare effect happening. That's weird. It was like surrounding the entire system for a moment. Odd enough. Okay, so on this world, yes, I definitely want to upgrade you, but then let's do an Auditon Monument here too. Been kind of low on those. Yes, let's continue this deal. Tell you what, um... Huh. I've got enough. I 
I'm so... Why in the world can I not select this? Hang on. Maybe, maybe if I sell... No, nothing's triggering it to give me more options. Okay, I'll go with the three rare crystals. I'm not sure why it's not letting me upgrade the uh, option. Okay, we're at 282 influence. Let's go to our unspent civic point. We're going to pause, reform the government. We currently have a parliamentary system, which means factions give us additional influence. That's helpful. And we're environmentalists, which means pop consumer goods are less consumed. So let's see. We can make all edicts cheaper with cutthroat politics. We could have a Byzantine bureaucracy where all bureaucrat jobs produce an additional unity and stability point. Beacon of Liberty would give additional unity. That's just this resource for traditions. That's it. Diplomatic Corps would give us two additional envoys and extra diplomatic weight. Ooh, that's interesting. Efficient bureaucracy would just give us more admin cap. Not necessary. Free Haven, Functional Architecture, Idealistic Foundation, lots of interesting choices. Merchant Guilds, Capital Buildings provide merchant jobs. Merchants also provide to unity. Meritocracy. So specialists would produce 10% more resources. Mining Guilds, ooh. Oh, see, that's also quite tempting. Shadow Council. Election Influence Cost, Ruler Pop Resource Output. This is really interesting to me. The ability to influence elections considerably more cheaply, especially given that we are at a point where we've been trying to manipulate our politics the entire series. I'm going to go with Shadow Council. Narratively, it's the right decision to make because that's going to allow me to much more easily throw my weight behind certain candidates in elections and ensure that we have the right people leading the country, leading the nation, leading the empire, whatever you want to call it, the republic. We're, we're in a state of transition. We don't know what we are right now. We're, be we're becoming more militarized, and things are generally confusing. We have an identity crisis, but it'll be okay. Let me pause for a moment, and we do have a mineral shortage now out of nowhere, probably to do with those upgrades that I've been doing. I will go ahead and use terraforming gases. Let's go ahead and do that so we have some minerals there. And we are lacking some volatile moats. Completed. How am I doing on moats? I can probably buy some pretty easily. Yeah, let's buy 200. And I can give the order to upgrade a few of my... Yeah. That would help. On these mining worlds. Yeah, this one too. Mm, no, not that one too, because that would eliminate my income. Let's not be too hypocritical against what we were talking about earlier. All right, so we're still gaining 3.47 influence. We'd be gaining more, but we're, again, we're playing a lot of faction politics. Let us continue. The modes must flow. Yep, let's go with three per month. We're playing all the faction politics. Yeah. Xenophily is really dropping. It's projected to be 26. But some of the others, like materialism, are still quite strong, frustratingly enough. So it's going to take that military leadership to really bolster things, I think. As soon as we have that 20% mark, I think things will be better. All right, so the Murex station is going to need another upgrade. We'll have those alloys before long. Let's go ahead and step up to speed three. The Bragafa station is ready to collect some trade value. Also, as far as the mineral situation is concerned, I can definitely build... Well, actually, I can't right now. Our service capacity is full, but I might be able to build something that would... Oh, hey. Alloy nanoplants. Hmm. I'd rather go for... Let's do the cheaper cruiser boost for now. But I will be able to build another mineral... What's it called? Nebula refinery. Yes, that thing. To bring in some additional resources in the future. The main thing that's going to help with our mineral shortage is, is rebuilding this guy. We need mega engineering to rebuild it, though. We haven't gotten that tech option yet. Haven't even seen it. 
sadly. Construction completed. Sad but true. We have not even seen it. All right, so we should now be applied. able to upgrade the Merrick station, which we are going to do. That station is going to be pivotal for the defense of the Empire in the future. All right, 25.7K is our fleet strength here. 18.9K is our fleet strength for the second fleet. Still building ships, too. So part of me wants to, like, buy a bunch of minerals just to build these ships a little bit faster. Yeah, you can see the upgrades at the Sol Station still going through. So this is going to be a bigger number by the time we're done. Volatile modes. I do have room for one more, but I think I have an upgrade going that will swallow that up. Research yep, concluded. I do. All right. Habitability plus five. That'll help. Gene modification points plus one. Ooh. Lots of good decisions. Um, let me go ahead and go for the habitability plus five bonus here because that will continue to give my pops a little bit more resource productivity. Ship upgrade. Yeah, you saw the bonus applied. there. It's not nothing. 5% more happiness across all of my planets. Plus that changes the... Because we're changing habitability, that also changes the extent to which certain like human pops will live on certain planets that I can colonize. I just still have some worlds I can colonize too, speaking of that. I have a continental world here that I've been sitting on for a while. Let's go ahead and colonize this. What are we going to call it? Zoroaster, that's interesting. Also kind of like Albion. There's an aesthetic that it fits with a lot of my previous planets. Pangea. I like Dawn. Simple, understated. It's at the end of a uh, period of a lot of fighting. There might still be more fighting, but... Given what we've just been through with all those wars and waiting for things to kind of break in our direction, Dawn makes sense as a planet name. Let's do a mineral purification hub here on Olympia because this is clearly going to be a mining world. I don't know why it's designated as a uh, generator world, but that doesn't need to be the case. That does not at all need to be the case. This is fine being a generator world. That's okay. Yay, new tradition. So we have selected domination. I can increase governor level cap. Capital buildings and housing buildings provide plus one housing each. Yep. Enforcers reduce crime by an additional 20%. Do I have crime on my worlds? I mean, not... Not really. Yeah, don't really have crime at the moment. Plus, I don't have enforcers. I haven't built too many of those. So, let's go with the additional housing. That's the obvious choice for immediate benefit. And those... Yep. Should go away. Lethal Instrument Pentatile Planets has vanquished an ancient threat in the distant Faragon system, so they're strong enough to be taking out Leviathans themselves. Research concluded. Interestingly enough. Okay, gateway travel has been finished. So that then leaves us with... Let's go with Tachyon Sensors so we can keep a closer eye on what our friends to the south are up to. The Lachax Commonwealth has made peace with the Yaxkalak Citizen Alliance. All right, so our envoys, I mentioned that I would look at this earlier. They are improving relationships with the, or relationship with the Yeon Star regime. And we have a very, very good relationship with them. We don't necessarily need someone improving relationship. The Rock Rock Multistellar is also technically, yeah, they're pathetic compared to us. They're already part of the Lethal Instrument Panaxala planets. Basically, the Mutual Assistance Federation is what it's called. We have a migration treaty, a research agreement, and a commercial pact with them. And then, of course, the Celestial Alliance is getting a little bit of help from one of our envoys as well. One of the reasons we might stay with the Rock Rock, on top of the fact that they were actually pretty helpful to us in that last war, we, are, we have a level 3 federation at this point with them. So we get one unity for each envoy assigned to the Federation. Right now there are two. But we also have additional ship speed bonuses, and we have additional influence gain for being in the Federation. So you can see... Interesting. Federation influence gain. Oh, it's for the President, and right now they're the President, so we're not getting that. But then 
for level two. Members contribute towards the Federation naval capacity a little bit more. New members impose a 50% smaller cohesion penalty to the Federation. And we have additional envoys as a result of being level two. So if we can make this work, if we can like, I mean, I would hate to hit back against the Rock Rock Multistellar, but how's our relationship with them overall? Yeah, they don't really have negative opinions of us right now, which is good. So our, the fact that we are treating with the Rock Rock Multistellar is not offending them. All right, capacity overload is up. We need to re-up that, but we don't have the influence for it. So our energy income is about to drop in five days. Not by a lot, though. I mean, we still have so much. And I think it just has to do with the fact that our trade is finally connected through Merrick. Also, notice that the Fianita station did connect itself. I think that was just a bug with the save game. That wasn't even a problem when I loaded up. So I think something was just glitched. Okay, let's take New Roanoke for a moment and see what we can do here. Where is New Roanoke, by the way? You know what? New Roanoke is in a position where a stronghold would come in really handy. So I'm going to do that. I want more rare crystals, too. And I want to, like, we, we need to do more in terms of turning minerals into rare resources. But right now, we don't have a mineral surplus. So I want to do stuff that is going to have an immediate impact. And in, in the case of that particular building, that means we're going to be able to defend that planet a little bit better should anyone try to invade it. Okay, you can see this upgrade is almost done. I think this is the one that was almost done before. I think there was a cruiser or battleship that was just so close to being finished, but not quite. Ship upgrades okay. applied. Almost to 20k. We are so ready to take on the shard. You want to take him on before we're done? We can do that. We can celebrate by taking on the shard. So, Mirak is ready to upgrade to a Starhold. We'll do that. Also, I want to have a crew quarters there. I'll have a gun battery and a missile battery. Alright, so Governor Soda Takahashi has died. I need to make sure all my sectors have governors. Oh, hey! Lucas Wagner is psychic. So let's definitely go with Lucas. Yeah, I've got governors. We're good. Do I have... Intellectual, bureaucrat. Aha! Is the key to the Aha! Universe. I just remembered. Thank you to the person who pointed this out. We do have a corrupt governor. Let's go ahead and dismiss you. This is just two planets, but I'm not going to stand for that. Perfect. We have another psychic governor there, so this is going to help with stability. Crime still hasn't been an issue, but something I'll keep an eye on. I think I will go for the... Let's go for the Gauss Cannon. Just have the maximum of that. Okay, you can see these fleets ready to go. This is going to be awesome. Shards going down. Alright, the Nebrite League has closed their borders to us. I'm going to return the favor. We can technically declare on them anytime we want. Part of me wants to. <laughs> Not just yet, though. All right, I'm going to reinforce the second fleet again. So we're building more battleships up, finally. Okay, so they've arrived. Let's go ahead and give the order to hit this thing with everything we've got. Oh, pause. So this is exotic gases, is fuel, shield boost, and bullet ammunition. I can probably get the shield boost back, bullet ammunition, not so much. So I'll get the fuel boost back. I mean, I have just so many exotic gases, I can justify spamming those like nobody's business. All right, so we are centered on them. Engaging hostile here we go. Forces. Shards going down. Well, let me let me rephrase that. I hope the shard's going down. Ooh. That's terrifying. So you can 
can see the artillery working in the back. Oh yeah, Shard's definitely going down. So we'll finally be able to colonize the Relic World and take advantage of that. Huge step in the right direction. And we'll also get the Rubricator from this bastard. Here we go. The Demise of Shard the Dragon. The vile old dragon known as Shard has drawn her final breath. In a satchel around her neck, nestled in the downy fuzz underneath the gnarled scales above her heart, hangs her most treasured possession, the Rubricator, a relic capable of replicating any artifact it has come in contact with. The Rubricator is ours. All right. So let me give some orders to reinforce. I'm going to have... You return to Sirius. I want to have this fleet return to Miric just in case. I'm going to set your home base as the Miric Starbase. You guys are just going to go back that direction. And let's take a quick look at what the Rubricator does for us, because I'm excited. So now we have this. The passive effect is that society research gets a permanent boost plus 20. When we activate it for 150 influence, we can just gain 30 minor artifacts immediately. So it's basically just being able to trade influence for minor artifacts, which we can then trade for energy. Just crazy. We do have the ability to discover Elgate insights with those too. So I don't think we're going to get to the Elgate in this series. I think I think the other factions are probably going to beat us to that, but we might still be able to take control of it once we come into our own, which is already starting to happen, finally. Let me very quickly, before we end here... I'm going to go ahead and buy a crap ton of alloys. I'm going to do an off-world trading company there. Yep, I'm going to give the order to reinforce the first fleet. And with that being done, with the shard being defeated, this is the battlefield. Look at all the fighters. Look at these guys. I can't click on them. Can't I? I thought I could, but I can't. Yeah, all these fighters going back to the carrier. It's so cool. With that being done, we will stop this episode here. In the next one, we are going to potentially go ahead and hit the Enigmatic Fortress. I will need to take Diomia. Hang on. We also need to go ahead and travel through that wormhole at long last. We have so much to do. Also, there is an archaeological site. I think that we've already completed, though. So we're going to build this starbase. And then we're going to stop here. We still have so much ahead of us. As soon as we get the mega engineering tech, we'll be able to start repairing the matter decompressor, which will permanently fix <laughs> our minerals shortage. And then the unified solar republic can start to turn things around. How big we can get our federation, diplomatic situation in this series. It's been less of a showcase of, of the new federation features than was planned, but we might be able to mess with that once we have really started to assert our power, once we have taken a chunk out of the NASA authority. We already have taken a chunk, but a much bigger chunk is the plan. We will possibly be able to start thinking in terms of how can we politically use our clout, especially once we turn to the militaristic dark side. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you're watching this one when it came out live, I'm sorry about the delay. I had a very important phone call that I had to take, and I was recording this episode the same day. So... This episode was out a little bit later than planned. But now that I'm done, I can still release the episode. Thanks for watching. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time.